Normally, DMC-1 supplies the captain's PFD, ND, and the upper ECAM screen. DMC-2 supplies the first officer's PFD, ND, and the lower ECAM screen. DMC-3 is available as a backup. Let's see what happens if DMC-1 should fail. For this exercise, you are the captain and you are the pilot flying. When DMC-1 fails, the captain's PFD and ND are lost, along with the upper ECAM screen. Since you no longer have any information to safely fly the aircraft, you should hand over control to the first officer. You are now the pilot not flying. Notice that all three displays have a diagonal white line through them. The white lines indicate that the displays are working, but are not receiving any data. As soon as the ECAM system detects the failure of DMC-1, you will get the normal alerts. You hear a single chime and see the master caution light. Cancel the master caution. Notice that the engine warning display has automatically transferred to the lower ECAM screen and is now receiving information from DMC2. So that you can so that you can carry out the ECAM procedure, we will bring up the lower part of the engine warning display and the switching panel for you. The ECAM procedure requires you to select Captain on the EIS DMC switch located on the switching panel. Carry out the ECAM action. DMC-3 will now supply information to the three displays and the EWD is automatically transferred back to the upper ECAM display. We can now complete the ECAM procedure. After confirmation from the other pilot, the EIS DMC fault message can be cleared. Clear EIS. The line on the engine warning display is cleared and the status page automatically called. There is a memo to tell you that the configuration of the switching panel is non-standard. Notice the inoperative DMC-1 is shown on the status page. After review of the status page by both pilots, the ECAM procedure can be completed. Clear status. The cruise page is displayed on the lower ECAM screen and the ECAM control panel has no lights on it. A boxed status message appears on the EWD to remind you that there is a message on the status page. This completes the procedure for a DMC-1 fault. ECAM complete, screens normal. If a single display unit fails, there are several ways that the EIS can be reconfigured to ensure that the pilots have all the information that they need. Let's look at several cases of this. If a primary flight display screen fails, the screen will blank. There is no white diagonal line since this is a screen failure, not a loss of data. Because the primary flight display has priority, the EIS will automatically transfer the PFD to the ND screen. If a navigation display fails, no automatic transfer takes place. If required, the PFD ND transfer switch can be used to manually transfer navigation information to the PFD screen. Should a failure of the upper ECAM display screen occur, an automatic transfer of the engine warning display to the lower ECAM screen takes place. Like the PFD, the EWD has priority over the system display, SD. System pages can be displayed by using the system switches on the ECAM control panel. You have to push and hold a push button to temporarily display a system page. 
While the system page is displayed, a white light illuminates on the push button. If a push button is held down for more than 30 seconds, the engine warning display screen will be recalled automatically. This happens because the ECAM system assigns priority to the EWD. As soon as the push button is released, the light goes out and the EWD reappears on the lower ECAM screen. If you need a system screen, you can transfer the SD to one of the ND screens using the ECAM ND transfer switch on the switching panel. Click on the ECAM ND transfer switch. By selecting the ECAM ND transfer switch to First Officer, the system display has been transferred to the First Officer's navigation display screen. Notice that the ND is replaced by the SD. It is not transferred. Normal selection of system pages is then available via the ECAM control panel. In the unlikely event that both ECAM displays fail, the ECAM ND transfer switch can be used to display the engine warning display on one of the navigation display units. Click on the ECAM ND transfer switch. As you can see, the first officer now has the engine warning display on his ND screen. If you need to look at a system page, this can be done by pressing and holding the related system page push button on the ECAM control panel for a maximum of 30 seconds. As soon as the system push button is released, the engine warning display returns and the light on the ECAM control panel is extinguished. When you are limited to a single ECAM screen, the handling of system malfunctions and how you are advised of failures is slightly different. For clarity, we will concentrate on the ECAM screen. If an advisory condition arises, the relevant system page is not automatically displayed. Instead, the light on the push button switch for the system and a boxed advisory message on the EWD will flash. If an ECAM warning or caution is triggered, then there will be no automatic display of the relevant system page. System pages should be called by manual selection on the ECAM control panel. To see this more clearly, let's look at a failure. We will only discuss the one ECAM screen and the selections on the ECAM control panel. When a failure is detected, ECAM will give the normal oral and visual indications. On the engine warning display, the failure message will be displayed and on the ECAM control panel, the two clear keys will be eliminated. By looking at the underlying system title, you can see which system page needs to be viewed. In this example, the Fuel Page push button should be selected and held on the ECAM control panel. The system page can be studied to provide more information about the failure and then the push button released. The engine warning display returns and the ECAM actions can be carried out. We will do these actions for you. Now that the ECAM actions have been completed, there is only the failure title remaining. To confirm what effect the actions have had on the system, reselect the fuel page on the ECAM control panel. Call the fuel page. As before, the fuel page is displayed while the push button is depressed. You can see on the system page that the crossfeed is connected and the pump has shut down.
As soon as the push button is released, the engine warning display returns. To continue with ECAM, a clear key should be pressed to remove the failure message on the engine warning display. Clear fuel. Normally, the status page would be displayed, but with only a single ECAM screen available, the status page must be manually selected. Notice that there is a boxed STS symbol on the engine warning display. The status push button should be held down and the status page reviewed. The status page can be displayed for up to three minutes before an automatic return to the EWD occurs. Once the review is complete, the push button is released and the engine warning display returns. The ECAM procedure is now complete. There are no lights on the ECAM control panel. ECAM complete, screens normal. During the approach phase, there is no automatic call of the status page when the flap selector is moved. To remind the pilots to review status, the boxed STS symbol on the engine warning display pulses. The status page should be selected as before.